Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth part of my series where I share my journey building a self-driving RC car. Over the last two months I have been busy finishing my master's degree in economics which left me little time to work on the car. But now we're back baby. That means our professional grade cardboard tinkering project is officially back in action. First, it was important for the car's platform to be strong enough to support everything on top. The batteries, the breadboard and the pie. I taped together three layers of cardboard and added a few glued in pieces to hold everything firmly in place. If we ignore the wiring for a moment, it's actually starting to look pretty good for a proof of concept build. Ideally the camera would be held in place with something other than duct tape, but it will do for now. Next, I recorded some manual driving footage around the track I built, conveniently located in the middle of our living room, much to my girlfriend's delight. Here we can see what driving around the track looks like from the car's perspective. Our next task is to create a Python program that can detect the blue line segments on the ground, which we'll later teach our model to follow. To make the task as easy as possible, we want the line's color to stand out clearly from the floor, and I think the blue tape does a pretty good job of that. This program takes the original driving footage and breaks it down into individual image frames. Each frame represents a single moment from the video, and these will later serve as the input data for our model. So instead of working directly with the video files, we will have a folder full of still images that are much easier to process and label. Next, I will run the automask.py script. This one generates automatic masks for each frame by detecting the blue line on the track. It loads every frame, converts the image from the regular BGR format to HSV, and then filters out only the pixels that fall within a certain range of blue values. After that, it applies a few cleanup steps like medium blurring and morphological closing to smooth out the mask and remove noise. The final result is a set of black and white mask images, which we can browse, and it looks like a low FPS video. These masks highlight just the blue track line, which is exactly what we want the model to learn to follow later. Now it's time to train the model using the trainsegmentation.py script. This script brings everything together, the frames, the masks and the neural network. It starts by selecting the latest run directory that contains all our data. Then it sets up a small unit model, which is a type of convolutional neural network made specifically for image segmentation tasks. The idea behind unit is that it has two main parts, a contracting path that gradually reduces the image and learns what features are important, and an expanding path that brings the image back to its original size while using those features to predict which pixels belong to the object we care about. In our case, that object is the blue line on the track. The model learns to take a regular camera frame and output a mask showing exactly where that line is. Training happens in two phases. First, a short warm-up phase to get the model started, and then a fine-tuning phase with a smaller learning rate to refine the results. During training, the script also saves visual previews that show the original frame, the ground truth mask, and the model's prediction side by side. It is a great way to see how the model improves after each epoch. When training is done, it saves the best model weights and can also export the model in several TensorFlow Lite formats, such as FP16, FP32 and INT8. Those formats make it possible to run the model efficiently on small devices, like our Raspberry Pi. These trained models can detect and follow the blue line on the track automatically. I connected the Pi to my monitor, ran inference on the FP32 version of the model, and here's what I saw.
we can see that the model is correctly identifying the blue line segments by overlaying them with a magenta color. Because I couldn't contain my excitement to let the car drive around, I immediately implemented Python code that makes the wheels turn based on the detected dots on the screen. I can toggle the self-driving mode on and off using a button on the transmitter, which I think turned out to be a pretty cool feature. When I press the button, the car starts driving forward, in short bursts for now. That's because, based on the input image we give to our model, it needs a brief moment to process the frame and make its prediction about the line segments and how the tires should turn. But still, the car can definitely navigate our track. That's all for now. As always, thank you so much for watching. Peace!